When you're starting a new project with, let's say, React.js or Next or Remix, you have to first cross this initial hurdle of coming up with a folder structure for your project. Breaking your project down into folder structures is not an easy task. It could be daunting for some. It will affect the entire life cycle of your app. And also, in some cases, it may affect the developer experience of the people working on your app. Before we jump in and break down our projects into folder structures, I want you to understand some key things. Your app is a combination of pages or routes. That is the reason why when you use frameworks like Next.js and Remix, you always have this routes folder where you have to define all your routes in one place. Your page or your route is a composition of several components. In the React world, a component accepts properties and also the component can have state. When the state changes, the component re-renders. You can further subdivide your component into two different types. Stateful components affect the global state of your app. They usually talk to the backend APIs to get the data and also to update the data. Stateless components, on the other hand, usually only display the properties that you pass. And in some cases, will also call the event handlers that you pass as properties. In rare cases, they may also update the internal state of the component, but never the global state of the app. Folders or modules, and a module is a collection of hooks, components, and APIs. And modules usually should have an entry point where you expose all your components, APIs, and hooks. Keep the dependencies of a module within that module. For example, if you're using a third party library to build your components module, make sure that you keep all the import statements of that third party library within that module only. Do not leak it outside. So based on what we talked about, this is the structure of the folder for a client-side rendered app. For example, when you build a client-side rendered app, you have to build everything from scratch. You would typically use a client-side router library. Each route is a page. All our pages are a collection of containers. Our containers are basically stateful components. So that means they would take the stateless components and merge them with the state. Uh, the hooks are the getters and the setters of the state for us. For the containers only know about the hooks. They don't really care about anything else. We also have a global state in the form of a state module and we also have a services module. The services module contains all the API calls for us and the state module imports the services module to fetch all the information from the backend and populate the global state. The hooks imports the state and forms the getter and the setter for our containers. Why do we have hooks? Because that is to loosely couple the containers and the state. I can scoop away my state and the services, but replace them with another technology like React Query. The arrows imply the import statements. On an ideal scenario, uh, we want the containers to only import from components and hooks. And on the same line, the hooks only care about the state APIs. It's the same architecture, but we have replaced the state module and the services module with another module called queries. We use React Query plus some API calls and they manage the state for us. This is the advantage of this architecture. If you look on the left side, you can scoop out your external component library plus the components into one scoopable module and you can make it into an NPM package if it grows too big. On the right side, you can see that the state on the services module can be replaced by any other tech stack that you like without affecting the containers, the hooks, and the pages or the routes. If you have a client-side rendered app, this architecture works really well. In case of Next.js or Remix, you typically have a loader attached to your route and that's responsible for getting the data for that route. And also you have actions attached to the same route. That's, that's where you set the data for the route. This comes with the framework itself. So we don't really have to reinvent the view and build our hooks layer and all that stuff. We can simply take the components and build our UI based on the response we get back from the loaders. We can simply keep the queries module and use that to talk to the database. 
if you have any other ideas for next projects or remix projects coming up with a proper folder structure uh, please let me know in the comments i'd be happy to read them and learn more about them as well thanks for watching this video hope you liked it if you liked it please subscribe for more and i will talk to you soon